Hello everybody and welcome. I'm here at the SAA headquarters TV studios in Newark, Nottinghamshire, UK. Welcome to all the SAA viewers, the subscription holders, and I know that there's lots of people trying to tune into this now from all over the world um, who are getting excited like we are about the forthcoming International Watercolour Masters exhibition next May 2020. Anyway, there's no time to lose. Today's demo, I'm going to demo in pure watercolour and the subject title is A Window in a Cottage and I've chosen this because the drawing's quite simple for anybody that wants to follow along at home. I'm using Winsor & Newton Pure Professional Watercolours and I've already pre-drawn the subject on my paper and because it's nearly Christmas, this is my version of an advent calendar, um, a little window here and I'm going to put that down to protect this area of my painting which I don't want to splash with colour. So there's a drawing under there. No time to lose. I'm going to go straight in and my first wash is a mix of raw sienna. And I'm going to put it on this uh, foreground area here which is uh, rocks in a wall. Off we go. Angled wash, diagonal strokes, I want to use the uh, paper, which is uh, Bockingford, not uh, 200 pound or 425 gram paper, um, which suits my uh, type of subject. It's, it's not smooth, obviously it's not rough. Um, I want to use all the advantages that paper gives me. And I'm not too bothered about if I miss a few little uh, areas of the, <coughs> of the paper, leave a few white bits, I should also say that I have spattered a little bit of uh, SAA blue masking fluid onto the subject just to preserve one or two highlights. And I've also, as you can see in my window frame, <coughs> I've cut some bits of card out and I've, or old watercolour paper, put them on just to preserve the white bits there. If I put lots of masking fluid over it, I'd use lots of masking fluid and then of course I would have to take it all off. So I'm just going to let that settle, that part there. I should just let it run that way a little bit. We'll come back to that in a second. Okay. Now normally, in pure watercolour, we work from light to dark. Now because I've only got an hour to uh, paint this, um, I need to crack on. So <clears throat> I'm going to mix my first dark, which is a mix of alizarin crimson and Indian Threen Blue, which is a little like De La Rowney Thalo Blue, if you haven't got Indian Threen Blue, and it's a kind of bluey purple colour. And I'm going to go straight in with the dark on my window <coughs> pane. Notice that I'm not going to bother about painting round the actual frame of the window. I'm going all over it. I'm even going to paint over that uh, metal pail that's in the window, or a bucket, whatever it is. And we'll have to find it again later on when this paint's dry, or nearly dry. I'm getting this on now so we stand a chance of it drying a little bit and settling off while I concentrate on other aspects of it. So I've got that on, that's okay. Let that do its thing. Put that brush down. Remember that it's uh, a dark mix. Back to this area of rocks, uh, sorry, bricks, bricks in the wall. A hog's hair brush, which is stiff, stiff bristle brush. Get some burnt sienna, consistency of cream and using a spattering technique. Notice my fingers at right angles to the brush and we're looking for little dots of colour flying off the brush into the stonework. We don't want big blobs of spatter, we just want little bits and we're going to let the paint paint the picture. If you can get the paint to paint the picture and help you, 
then uh, it's even better. I should say that this subject is um, actually a squatter's cottage, which is in a place called Blist's Hill, which is a wonderful place to visit. It's a kind of Victorian town in the Severn Valley, which is uh, obviously by the River Severn. Fabulous part, a lot of uh, social industrial heritage from the past. Uh, it's near to a place called Iron Bridge, which is, of course, as you will know, the historians amongst you, the first Iron Bridge in the world. Great place to visit. Uh, David, I have a question for you. Don't, don't panic. I'm not. Uh, from uh, Amy, she wants to know, uh, when you put that first wash on your wall, why were you doing the crisscross strokes rather than just going horizontal? Okay, the because I didn't want it to be a smooth wash, uh, equal wash. I wanted it to be variegated. Um, and if I go diagonally, and I use that technique a lot, diagonal strokes, then I can leave little bits of the white paper showing. When I overlay my washes, once that's dry, um, I'll probably do the same thing again. And then you'll see bits of the first wash, which is this raw sienna, little gaps showing through the second wash or third wash. Um, those familiar with my work will know that I do do a lot of multi-layering and I can do up to 20 or 20, even 24 layers of paint. Um, and of course, it's very time consuming. Notice this now, I'm dropping in pure burnt sienna into that first wash. It's all very wash, uh, sorry, very wet. Which is just what we want. All the time your paint is wet, you've got a chance to manipulate it. The most dangerous time is when it's just almost dry and if you start dabbing about with it then you could end up with mud. If you want to overlay glazes on top, you have to wait for it to dry. Okay, so while that's all wet, I'm going to use the other end of this brush and I'm going to impress into the paper, press down, roughly on the divisions between the bricks that make up this wall randomly and that will give me a kind of dark key line for later on um, and it'll show through it'll add some texture to the painting <coughs> and it'll help me to refine the uh, bits of the drawing that I've lost as you will have noticed the drawing itself was very very simple basic drawing there's no shading on the drawing <clears throat> just basic scaffold lines and that's all you need. If you get too fiddly with your drawing it's, uh, it's not very good really because you'll find you're getting uh, distracted. Okay, So while that's just settling slightly I'm going to go back to my window area using this great brush this it's an SAA imitation sable number 12 great um, clean brush dry on a tissue paper so it's slightly damp and refined this bowl that's in the window roughly as you have seen from the reference photo it's just barely visible through the window and as I said this this is actually a squatter's cottage a real one and at one time, it's only two, two rooms downstairs, there's no upstairs. At one time there were a family of 12 people living in this. It's amazing, 12 people living in one little two room place like this. The walls are very thick and the people that built it um, made shelves in the walls, quite deep recesses in the walls, all the way up the walls inside are where they could put the children because they didn't all have beds. And the higher up the wall, um, the warmer it was, because they just had one fire, a coal fire, to uh, light to uh, keep them warm. So. Okay, so that's all still very wet, and I'm just going to let that settle off. I've refound my bowl, kind of. Obviously, I'm not finished with it yet. Back to this area here. Now, with a mix of cerulean blue.
and rose madder. I love rose, rose madder, love that colour. With cerulean blue or with manganese blue, it makes a lovely kind of lavender colour. Colour of Provence. Anybody's been there, it's, that's a fabulous place. And I'm now going to flick some of this, spatter some of this into my wall. And what that'll do is it'll just take off some of the um, glare of the pure colours that I've used. Basically tone it down a little bit. Trying to find roughly, very roughly, not too bothered about accuracy at this point, the actual uh, shadow parts and the bits where the, the, the bricks actually join each other. We know that that part over there is going to be quite heavy in shadow. Again, a few little bits of uh, salt and pepper. Okay, back to my bowl. So you'll notice I'm jumping about a lot, not literally different areas of the painting. Keep your eye on what, what's happening in the rest of the painting. Although this painting is divided into three parts really, the window, the shutter and the wall, we do need to have to unify them and, and, and make them join up which we'll come to a little bit later. So I'm just going back to my bowl, which is still damp, just going to get a bit more of the bowl showing. So this cottage, which I've been to quite a few times, it's a lovely place, um, is set up as if the people were still living in it. So uh, we're looking into their world. And we've just got a hint of the world they lived in with this bucket. Um, but obviously we want to maintain their uh, privacy, so we're not going to... Uh, describe too much what's inside. Okay, just going to let this rock the board slightly, which will encourage granulation in the brick area, we hope. Now, Excuse me, I just need to use my hair dryer to uh, dry this off a little bit. So with the window, you can see I was trying to accelerate the drying a little bit by tapping it with my thumb. Um, now, I don't want that window to be entirely one colour. 
So I don't mind some modulation in it. So where I've tapped it, um, it's a kind of um, technique called sfumato, which Leonardo da Vinci invented. And really it's for oil painters, where they can make subtle blends in, in their uh, color application by tapping the paint with their thumb. So uh, it's good for uh, portrait painters especially to use that. So while I've got that like that, I'm going to now, my second wash, that dark colour onto my window area. Two bits of wood and a ruler. Get my brush, that mix. Notice also that I use a pipette to transfer water to my uh, sources where I've got my washes or, or my uh, palette um, and that helps to keep the water I'm using clean for as long as I possibly can. <clears throat> Let me go down here, concentrate. See that? That's why that's there because when you get excited about what you're painting, you know, you know you're not that necessarily that careful. I'm just going to come down the top of that window frame a little bit there then go into my window. This is the second wash. This time, as you'll see, um, I'm not going diagonally with this one. I'm just going straight. And this ruler and uh, this contraption helps me just to get some accuracy with what I'm trying to do here. Line there. I've skirted round that bucket. Notice also I've got, you know, I don't know if you can see, but I've got this little bit of cardboard here, uh, which will show me where the window frame is because I'm covering it all with paint. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that window frame back when this one's dry, this wash is dry, by washing out the color. So yeah, we're all getting very excited about the International Watercolor Masters show next year. And um, there's going to be lots of demonstrations and lectures live from the uh, IWM exhibition arena at Lillyshaw Hall. Um, it's going to be absolutely fabulous. Um, they're going to broadcast, the SAA are going to broadcast these live, a lot of them. Um, some of them they will maybe stockpile for later. Um, they're going to be exclusively for SAA uh, subscription holders. So. Anybody tempted to, uh, who wants to see what's going on at the uh, International Watercolour Masters but can't actually get there in person, can still follow along and watch by subscribing to the SAA. Okay, so while I've got that, I'm just going to get damp brush and just touch the edge, the top of that bucket to soften it. It's not, there's no hard edges. We're looking through glass, which you know is probably a little bit grubby, to find our bucket and we just want a hint of it. Notice compositionally that uh, this bucket is also placed on a third. If, if we expose the whole paper, uh, we could divide it into thirds and we know that at the point where thirds intersect, for some reason, it's particularly attractive to the viewer. So if you want people to pay attention to your own paintings and a particular part of the subject, then position that part on a third, or even better, an intersecting third. Soften that edge there. That's right, now I'll just let that settle. This bit here, this is uh, something you, I don't know if you can zoom in on this Gary, damp brush, clean tissue paper preferably. It's best to do this with a kind of quite slightly stiff 
uh, brush and this, these FAA synthetic brushes are great for this because they just give you some control. Damp brush, touch the edge of that wash and push it back into itself. You can see, I think, that this board is on a little bit of wood and it's, it's sloping slightly because I want the wash to run down. So I'm pushing this paint back into itself, which will then give us a kind of, not a sharp edge, um, it's an edge, but it's not sharp. And you'll know a thing called aerial perspective, um, which is slightly different to normal perspective. With aerial perspective, soft edges are in the distance, hard edges come forward, um, and also there are lots of colours at play when you do that uh, aerial perspective as well. Blues in the background, reds in the foreground. So it's a whole science in itself, aerial perspective. Quite often the difference between um, professional, professional uh, paintings in, in galleries or exhibitions and enthusiast shows, the difference is in the edges that the artist has worked into his painting. Um, not, all head, not all edges are hard, just like not all shadows are black or grey. In fact, very few are. Okay, so I'm going to let that let that settle. While that's settling, this is still slightly damp. While it's, I'm going to just dry that off and get my second wash onto that part. Good enough. Okay. As the first wash was, first of all, get some clean water. That wasn't onto the carpet, by the way. There's a bucket there. Back to my wash of raw sienna. Remember this has got two or three layers on it already because we had raw sienna, then the burnt sienna, then the, the uh, cerulean or manganese blue and rose madder to give us these sort of like nice lavendery colour. And I'm going in now again with that diagonal application leaving gaps here and there. Don't get too fussy if you're trying to paint this at home with, with, with it. You know, don't try and follow all the lines exactly. Let it paint itself as much as, it, as, much as you can. So already we're, we're starting to get some depth into this and where you can see the, uh, the, cut, the washes underneath are poking through the, uh, this latest wash that I'm putting on, on top now. There's always a point in a painting, as you will know, where you feel that the paintings run away with it, run away from you. So you start off with great enthusiasm and there's a bit in the middle where maybe it looks a little bit messy and all this other stuff. Don't worry, you're not alone. Everyone that paints feels like that. Persevere with it and hopefully it will come good. So I'm going back now to my burnt sienna. cream consistency and I'm going to spatter some more of this into this area here. All the time I'm, I'm, hot, I'm looking at this but I'm also half looking at that window area to, to, to make sure it's behaving itself and not going completely bonkers. Excuse me. Yes, thank you. 
That's the wonderful Gary. No one can see me, sorry. Shall I describe you, Gary? <laughs> oh, they've seen me before. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll all know Gary's a... He's indispensable. The S SAA TV producer. Thank you, Gary. You're right. Gary will be at the International Watercolour Masters exhibition every day during the show. Not every day, I'm having the weekend off in the middle. Adam's doing the weekend in the middle. I get to go home and see my family. Okay. Nearly every day. Nearly every day Gary's there, so go and say hello to him. Get his autograph. Oh yeah, get a selfie. Get a selfie. It'll be great. <laughs> so you'll miss the party then? Uh, when's the party? Uh, yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> the party I mean, it wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be a proper exhibition, would it, without a party? You've got to have a party. Any excuse for a party. Okay, back to this. Concentrate. Right, so I've just flicked some more burnt sienna onto it. I'm now going back to my rose madder cerulean blue and I'm going to put some of that in. Again. Now we know there's a dark shadow under the actual shutter area, which we haven't got to yet. So we're going to get some, some of that in. You can steer this uh, cerulean rose madder mix, you can make it more red or more blue play around with it, discover what color, the colors that work for you and the colors that excite you. Um, the colors that I use, that I've ended up using really are, come to after many years of experimenting with lots of different colors and everything. And I find that this particular palette suits me, suits the type of uh, subjects I paint. And, um, and I, I, I find they're like a little family of colors because they all, not that all families get on with each other, but this family does. So, salt and pepper. I'm just going to rock this board slightly. Get that off there. Let the colours run into each other. Uh, don't be afraid to uh, steer some of the paint with your fingers. If you're worried about that, then obviously use some gloves. When the paint is almost dry, as some of this colour is from underneath, you can actually scratch into it with your nail and see that you can produce these nice highlights. I know some people use um, an old credit card or something to do with that particular thing, but I just feel it's more organic if you use your fingers and you, you've got more, more control. In fact, your fingers probably, well they are your greatest tool aren't they, it's great. But of course then you have dirty fingers and you have to wash them. Anyway that's probably, while that's drying off, probably a good time to uh, just have a quick interlude and uh, see you all in a minute or two. 39 Master Artists, 10 days, one inspirational exhibition. International Watercolour Masters is back. Come and experience for yourself the work of some of the world's most renowned watercolour artists in this inspirational contemporary exhibition. From the 5th to the 15th of May next year, Lillishall Hall in Shropshire will be home to a range of demonstrations, lectures and live broadcasts from these master artists. With beautiful Italian gardens, an on-site cafe and walking routes around the English Heritage Grade 2 listed grounds, Lillishaw Hall is the perfect location for a fantastic day out. We invite you to join us next year at the International Watercolour Master Shows. Many of the top watercolours that are working today are going to be there and there's lots of exciting stuff planned. Looking forward to see you there. Don't miss the opportunity to see the master from all over the world. Uh, showing the work in their skills. See you there? Don't miss it. Come join us. It's going to be fabulous. We will see you then.
Welcome back everybody. As you can see, I'm just drying this. Okay. Okay. Some nice things starting to happen now in, now in this bottom wash. Um, I'm, quite, I'm quite happy with that at the moment. Still a little bit sticky, but that's okay. Just get rid of this here and get some clean tissue paper. And now I'm going to take off this. And I'm going to take off that protection for my shutter. Now, you see suddenly we're faced with a lot of white paper and you can immediately see the contrast, see how dark this is against the white of that. It's giving us something we can enjoy. We're going to enjoy this, enjoy doing this part. Great. Right, so first job is this window frame. I'm going to use my uh, flat brush. I don't know what size, what size is it? Number 12. Have the board sl slightly tilted. And I'm going to, some of this is pretty dry, and some of it is still damp. I'm going to get some cobalt blue. Cobalt blue. There's actually some cerulean in this as well, so which just takes the, it takes the edge off the cobalt. And uh, that's okay, we don't mind that. Get some of that. And I'm going to... Those back. Get my ruler. We have some technical issues down here. Uh, going to paint that window frame. Quite wet. Pull that down and you'll notice on the reference image there's the, a shadow on that part there. I'm going, just going to uh, manipulate this edge up here with the damp brush. Just to pull some of that dark wash into that window frame which will lose the edges and take it back into the shadows which is what we want. Uh, just so you know there's a there's an overhang um, with this subject uh, the roof line which is causing this car shadow on the top. So I've knocked that back. Window frame, damp brush, let's find out where it was. It was in here. There we go, lovely. Coming back, let that uh, do its thing for a minute. This side, just disappearing into the shadow, that side. We're just suggesting where that is. Like we're suggesting that the world, the inhabitants of this squatter's cottage, inhabited. Yeah. I think it's important when you paint, whatever, whatever subject you paint, is to, is to respect the subject. Respect the people that either live there, or if it's an, an object or a piece of machinery, who built it, who made it, and who works with that machine. Uh, respect them. And if you think about the kind of people that would have lived here um, and worked hard in the Severn Valley in the industry that existed uh, in those times, which would have been the 19th century, perhaps in the tile industry. Um, you know, they had pretty hard lives. And um, if you keep those ideas in your head when you're painting it, I think it adds something to the, the painting. Um, we want the painting not to be cold, we want it to, to feel something. Now this edge here on the right of the window frame is in shadow, 
I'm just going to pull a little bit, suggest this for now, I'll do a little bit more in a bit. Suggest where that shadow is going to be with cobalt blue. Back to my bucket, get some of that back. And over this part of the window is a, another kind of highlight, which I'm not sure if it's inside the uh, cottage or on the outside, but let's assume it's on the inside. Adds a bit of mystery to it. Pull that down a little bit more. Like that, 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 that's that. Right. Take that off there. Okay, so it's coming together quite nicely now, that bit. This corner of the bucket here that comes behind the... Sorry, Nick, I just pause you there. I'm having a bit of a, an issue with my cameras. I'm, not, I'm stuck on your, uh, your reference picture. It won't, it won't disappear off that. Hold on. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so top left corner of our tin bucket or enamel bucket that's in the window, I'm going to lose that edge, lose the edge as if the light is just hitting it. And you know, if you can manipulate the light in your paintings, you can bring your subjects to life. Let that settle a little bit. While that's doing that, I'm going to now pull a wash across. I think I'll use the same brush, uh, use, uh, yes, the first mix we had, which was alizarin and uh, indenthrine to give us that sort of purpley, aubergine colour. And I'm going to pull that across the top. Mind your head, David. You're getting a nice shot of the top of your head there. Sorry. It's all right. It's not, yeah. Back to my mix of cobalt blue. Wet into wet, let that blend down. Gives him my shadow. That's that, 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 that. Okay. While I've got that there, I'm going to now get a, a rigger brush, which is a great brush. Again, this is a synthetic SAA rigger brush. And I'm going to just put this dark in where the shutter meets the wall. And key line. Is that dry? That's dry so I can do some work over this side now. I'm going to get the shadow in under the window. With the rigger. kind of a V-shaped shadow. If you miss a few little bits, it doesn't matter, just leave it, leave it there. We know that over here, there's a rock that comes about here, I think, and that's going to be a dark crack. So I'm just putting that there now, just as a reminder to myself that that's got to go. Now I think actually I can get some darks in these rocks now while I'm, while I'm at this, while on this part. We know that there's a rock goes up here. Use the ferrule of your brush as well. Don't be too precious with your brushes. They are your tools, basically. And you can use every part of this brush to make the marks that you want to mark, that you want to make. Um, you don't just have to use the, um, the bristles. You can use the handle as well. Old handles of paint brushes are great. Uh, great to, to save and to use as well for uh, applying masking fluid which as those of you know is not a good thing to use on a brush that you want to keep. Coming down here with this part this for Martu there and we know going under there Just 
switching brushes to a little quarter inch flat. I'm just floating this over the top. I'm not pressing down because I, uh, I don't really want to disturb the, the colourways underneath. I want them to keep shining through. So I'm going there. So here I've got some masking tape. And I've got some more over here, which I'll just take off now. Remember also on here there is some uh, masking fluid as well. So I'm going to go around that gives me a little bit of a highlight and I'll glaze over that a little bit later. Later. How are we for time? Not much later. We've got about 20 minutes. No pressure then. No, no. A few little spatters, little salt and pepper of these. Adds to that. That's nicely. End of your brush, pull some of this down, round, make those shapes. Little squiggles. Who's there? Okay, so far so good. Right, next thing is I'm going to do some work on this uh, shutter. So a little bit of yellow ochre or raw sienna, a few little almost dry brush, well it is dry brush, uh, strokes to take, the, take it away from the white paper. A little bit of that mangan uh, manganese and rose madder mix as well. We can we can get some of that on. A few little touches. Put some water along the edge and let it bleed into it. Texture. Wet into wet. Now. One part of this shutter that I think is very important is this part here that, that to me links this part of the painting together and that is this dark that goes in this part here. The dark and it links with the bottom part and suddenly it's connected. Another part that we need to pay attention to is a kind of rhyme with this. Um, and that's an area of light up here, which we're going to get back by just washing away here. So it's almost like they're talking to each other. Pull some of this down. Okay, if it doesn't get there the first time, do it again. Do that. This part here, if you think you've lost some of the lights, you can just scrub it away with your bristle brush and give it a dab. And suddenly you've got the wash the first wash is exposed that we put on earlier. See it? Nice. Scraping that with the ferrule of the brush. Okay, next bit is I'm going to put some lines in my shutter, which are the bits where the uh, planks of the shutter fit together. Now here's a tip with your uh, rigger brush if you want to have a really fine line, just give it a little squeeze like that and you can get the brush really fine, okay? So get some paint.
fine brush. Actually, that's a little bit too thin, that wash, so I'll just mix a little bit more of that. Uh, I'm going to use some phthalo and some rose madder, which will give me a kind of aubergine colour. Nice sharp brush. And to find some of the grains in the wood now. Down, down the bottom part of the shutter where it meets the uh, brick wall, that's where most of this te texture will uh, appear. Beautiful colour is Cobalt Violet, which uh, is a Winsor & Newton colour. Lovely colour. Cobalt Violet, I'm going to use some of that. To get this shadow over here while I notice it. I'm going to put some over here as well. Using the side of the brush, just scrape it up to the paper. Gives you some nice texture. If you think you've, had, you've overdone your um, bits of grain, then you can just scrub them out a little bit. While I've got that there, back to this uh, quarter inch flat. Get some uh, manganese blue. Manganese blue, it's a little bit like cerulean blue, of course, as you will know, same kind of colour. Um, it's a little bit more transparent, I think, than cerulean blue. And it also, well, like cerulean, it, it will granulate a little bit. I'm going to put this shadow in here. And there's another shadow going down there. This one's more subtle than that, but remember your watercolour paint will always dry half as light as when you first put it on the paper. So if you think it's too dark, the colour that you put on, don't panic, just wait and it uh, might come good. A bit of salt and pepper, simulating years of weather hitting that. Okay, now back to this area here. Uh, what have we got? We've got a little bit of burnt sienna and down here and that kind of fades away into that part there. Now we've got lots of nail heads on this uh, shutter so use the other end of your brush and just put them in like that. David, we're into our last 10 minutes, not wanting okay. to rush you or anything. Okay. <laughs> okay, now you'll see where that nail head has hit that wet paint, it's dispersing and giving a lovely r rusted, rusted effect. And you know that, you know how much I love rust, and in rust I trust. So I'm going to dab a little bit of burnt sienna onto this uh, and let it, let it paint itself. You don't have to do it on all of them, but some of them would help. That's going to come down there, there, there. Again, don't be afraid to use your hands, and fingers. Okay, back to this part that's going on here. Right, that's around there. That's that, 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 that. There, now I want some manganese blue onto that shadow I put there. 
So that it will look a little bit more like it's connected to that one. In here is a kind of mauvey colour, which is the shadow. As I said, shadows are not grey and they're not black. Notice as well, I'm going to just drop a little bit of yellow ochre into that colour I've just put on there. Quite nice. Pull it over that side to there. Back to my uh, mauvey colour. I'm going to drop some of that now on that corner and let it drift into the yellow ochre. Back to that. On our bucket, there is a nice dark, which uh, we'll get on. So give us some on the bucket itself. Somewhere around here. There's a shadow coming here. Now, some work on the window frame. A few little just to suggest where the, the paintwork split. Okay. Okay, so now Reinforce that under there slightly, it's not gone a little bit strange. Come around here with that more brickwork. Over here. It's more dark on that shadow. I'm going to dry this off in a second with the hairdryer and then I'll remove the masking fluid I've got here and there. A few little very fine bits of spatter. Just a bit over here. And also inside of my window frame. Yeah. going to come down there. Okay. Quite nice dark here. A few little bits of fine detail. Is my bucket okay? Okay, for now, just back up to the top. Just uh, one more pass of that uh, bluey colour. I think. Dry this off now. How long we got, Gary? About five minutes. Oh, more time than I thought. Yeah. This is multitasking.
Okay, so now I've got all the masking fluid off, just about. So I've got all these whites here, get my raw sienna. And just glaze over some of these whites. Just to give us another dimension. Then, check that bucket. I think we could do with a little bit of dark on that shadow part of the bucket there, where there's a hole in it, hole in that bucket. And there's a kind of, a, just a suggestion of the top, but not too much. There's a bit of dark in here. There. Take that window frame, frame back slightly. <coughs> Finally, cerulean blue, and we're going to suggest a little bit of aerial perspective and dust, and this window probably wasn't absolutely clean, so I'm going to, going to spatter some cerulean blue onto the window part, almost like salt and pepper. It's an effect. A little bit on the door, shutter, a bit more on our stonework, nice blue and that cerulean blue, <coughs> hopefully, is just pulling the whole composition together into one bit, one painting, a bit more dark on that. Okay, so that's probably about it. Clean my hands. Let's see what we've got. So what we've got there is window in a cottage. Hope you enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing you all at the International Watercolour Masters Exhibition, Lillyshaw Hall, Shropshire, May 5 to 15, 2020. Come and say hello. See you there. Thirty nine master artists, ten days, one inspirational exhibition. International Watercolour Masters is back. Come and experience for yourself the work of some of the world's most renowned watercolour artists in this inspirational contemporary exhibition. From the 5th to the 15th of May next year, Lillyshaw Hall in Shropshire will be home to a range of demonstrations, lectures and live broadcasts from these master artists with beautiful Italian gardens, an on-site cafe and walking routes around the English Heritage Grade 2 listed grounds, Lillyshaw Hall is the perfect location for a fantastic day out. We invite you to join us next year at the International Watercolour Master Shows. Many of the top watercolours that are working today are going to be there and there's lots of exciting stuff planned. Looking forward to see you there. 
don't miss the opportunity to see the master from all over the world uh, showing the work in their skills. See you there, don't miss it. Come join us, it's gonna be fabulous. We will see you there.